I don't know how else to tell my demographic of people that it's over. I don't know how clearer I can say it to us than to say it's over. Our control, our power, our privilege, it's over. It's over. And it doesn't matter if you have a Democrat or a Republican in the House, whomever is in control will only push us closer and closer to our inevitable end, which is civil war. And I smile and smirk because I'm ready for that. It is the only way that we're going to get it to what we need in order to live in this country. And to be honest, white people, we might not be welcome here when it's all said and done. Are you ready for that? That's if you even accept that we're going into civil war and you can survive that part. Y'all are too busy hanging on to the privilege of our grandparents, thinking that if you just continue just to hold on for dear life, everything will go back to the leave it the beaver racist ways when we all had privilege and we were in control and on top of society. No, the pandemic took care of that. My message to white people is get ready. Get prepared. Figure out what side you're on and be ten toes down. Because regardless of what you're holding on to from the past, the future is war and it's coming. And she's absolutely right on certain parts she brought out. I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashim El Shai, Bashim Dash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS, better known as Great Millstone, who taught us this truth. Peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect, the tabernacle of David. This is your brother, Matizabath, back again with another impromptu video. And uh, this individual um, who goes by the name of Queen Kim, the OG, <laughs> basically uh, told all. All right. Told it like it was straight down the middle. No emotions involved. All right. Gave it to you raw. And um, she's absolutely right. You know, in certain points now, what she doesn't understand is that, you know, America uh, will not. All right. There will not be nothing left after it is completely uh, left desolate. All right. And it tells you that in the book of Jeremiah. All right. That we would have healed Babylon. All right. But she cannot be healed. All right. Her sins reaching up, roughly paraphrasing. All right. So the Lord is uh setting it up all right for the um that domino effect all right utterly wasted but uh i just want to get a few precepts i don't want to make this too long all right because she says something about how you know um the cages of car are holding on to the past all right and to prove that the cages of car are running the world today okay let's get the book of job basic precepts Chapter 9, verse 24 says, The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof, if not where and who is he? Now, according to the Bible, who is the wicked? Let's get Malachi 1 and 4. We'll start at verse 3. Actually, we start at verse 2. It says, I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau. And laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus said the Lord Yahweh of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath in the nation forever. So the Edomites, okay, are known as the wicked, all right? And yes, the occasions of call come from the line of Edom, all right? And how do we know that? Because it tells you in the Apocrypha, 2nd Edges chapter 6, we'll start at verse 7. It says, Then answered I and said, What shall be the part in the sunder of times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, meaning the end of this age. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So now you really have to use your head and put, you know, two and two together. Who's ruling the war right now in terms of the banking system? All right. In terms of the wealth generated, in terms of the resources pulling, in terms of military power flexing their military arms, all right, across the four corners of the earth. All right. I'll leave that one for you to say. 
But nevertheless, all right, the Cajuns of Call, what have they done since they come into power? Let's get Micah 2. We'll start at the top. It says, woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. Referring back to what? Job 9 and 24. The earth was given, okay, unto the wicked. Verse 2. And they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man in his house, even a man in his heritage. And what did she say? She said that they predicate themselves by living off their foreparents, their grandparents in terms of so-called white privilege. OK, because what nation of people was going around coveting fields, taking them by violence, going into lands that were not theirs, taking people's houses away, oppressing a man and even still in his heritage. What nation of people is known for doing that? Right. Let's get uh, Psalms chapter 49 in verse 11. It says their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. This is the reason why she said the Cajuns of call need to choose a side because they want to keep their privileges. But they fail to understand that this is the end of their reign. It says in their dwelling places to all generations, they call their lands after their own names. So this particular group of nation of people. All right. When they came into power, when the Lord has given uh, given them, you know, all the uh, the resources. All right. The fatness of the earth, the dew of heaven, as mentioned in Genesis, the 27 chapter. All right. Which was the uh, blessing that Isaac gave Esau. All right. They were blessed with the sword and they used the sword to go around. All right. And covet after fields that were not theirs. And the scriptures tells you that you are not to remove the landmark. Right. Let's grab that. All right. Here's three precepts. Deuteronomy 19 and 14. Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set in thine inheritance, which thou shalt inherit in the land that Yahweh thy power giveth thee to possess it. Proverbs 22 and verse 28. Remove not the ancient landmark, which thy fathers have set. Proverbs 23 and 10. Remove not the old landmark and enter not into the fields of the fatherless. But what did the nation of uh, Edom do? OK, everywhere they went, they conquered and they took over ancient landmarks and then pertained to Psalms 49 and 11. Let's read it again. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. So by them going into those ancient landmarks and taking them over. OK, case in point, look what they did to the uh, so-called Native Americans, the tribe of Gad. They came to the Americas and took over the land. And then they started to call the land of America after their own name. OK, now they're calling themselves Americans. They're not Americans, just like they call themselves British. They're not Brit British, just like they call themselves Canadians. They're not Canadians, just like they call themselves Australians. They're not Australians. OK. This is why the scripture says this Isaiah 14 and 21. All right, because she made a good point, right? And before I bring that scripture out, let's take this back. Let's take this back about halfway about right here. I don't know how else to tell my demographic of people that it's over. I don't know how clearer I can say it to us than to say it's over. Our control, our power, our privilege, it's over. It's over and it doesn't matter if you have a democrat or a republican in the house whomever is in control will only push us closer and closer to our inevitable end which is civil war and she's correct but the only reason that's going to happen is because it's prophesied to happen all right the lord said that you know roughly paraphrasing that you know um babylon it has to be destroyed all right it also tells you in lamentations the fourth chapter that uh, Esau, uh, he will discover thy, uh, thy sins. Okay. So she's absolutely right. It doesn't matter who they get in office. 
the Lord is setting it up for Babylon, which is America, to uh, to be destroyed. Right. And I smile and smirk because I'm ready for that. It is the only way that we're going to get to what we need in order to live in this country. And to be honest, white people, we might not be welcome here when it's all said and done. Are you ready for that? That's if you even accept that we're going into civil war and you can survive that part. Y'all are too busy hanging on to the privilege of our grandparents thinking that if you just continue just to hold on for dear life, everything will go back to the leave it the beaver racist ways when we all had privilege and we were in control and on top of society. And what does the Bible say? This is Isaiah 14 and verse 21. It says, prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquities of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Because it is your foreparents, all right? And that goes back to generation to generation, going as far back as doing a translated slave trade, or even as far back, going back to so-called Christopher Columbus, whose real name is Cristobal Colon, in 1492, that set sail to come over to a land that was not his, right? And your privilege, all right, going as far back as to that, taking over a land, okay, from the so-called Native Americans who are from the tribe of Gad, okay, part of the Northern Kingdom, right? You took over their land, all right. And then you you pass down that inheritance of something that was not yours to your children. So hence why the prophecy states that your children, OK, shall not rise up nor to possess the land nor fill the face of the world. Because, yes, your children, OK, have gotten the inheritance and that's and it's been passed down from generation to generation. But as she stated, OK, you are in a time now where, no, that privilege is gone. You can kiss it goodbye. OK, <laughs> so, you know, that's all I wanted to grab on that call. Hello, you know, you how about you? I was shy by Shimon Kakwadash until the next time. Shalom.